Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad I'm not too close to the alcohol. We are not yet competing with the alcohol. So my name is Ralph Kubli. I'm uh, on the board of Casper Association, and we are going to tell you with a word of warning that we are headed for disaster, but there is hope. There is hope for tokenization. What do we believe the future is? We all are here, we believe the future is tokenized. When we talk about tokenization of financial assets, we, in our world, refer to financial contracts. So what are financial contracts? Bonds, annuities, commodities, even shares, although I think that's the most boring asset class to tokenize. But of course, also off-balance sheet items like swaps, futures, you know, CDOs, if they still exist. And then collateral, uh, uh, sorry, credit enhancements, of course. So anything that is a guarantee or um, uh, collateral or repo or a margin call. However, we are headed for disaster. Why are we headed for disaster? Well, that's the topic of our talk. And do not look, do not look for DeFi uh, is that missing? So we are, we're headed for disaster. Do not look for DeFi to be your salvation because DeFi is really simple today, right? All that DeFi is today is over collateralized lending and a little bit of payments. But, you know, payments is largely solved in the world, right? But all that these DeFi protocols do is a little bit of over collateralized lending. So that is not going to solve the problem that we have. Furthermore, we are really in a bad state. If the leading tokenization platforms tokenize in the way that they do today, which means they take a PDF, they hash the PDF and they store it in the token, that is a pretty stupid token. That's a pretty stupid token. It's not a lot of innovation. And the other problem is that most tokenization platforms, they somehow represent the asset side, all right? but they forget the liability side. That in my world, and probably yours, if you have attended any classes here in this institution, is clearly ungenügend, right? You're missing a piece of the puzzle. That's what I said, I'm sorry. So DeFi is not the salvation either because it's just over collateralized lending. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we think that you need to solve this problem by bringing real finance, which is a machine readable and machine executable term sheet. And we combine that with the unique properties of blockchain, which brings you verifiability, observability, and auditability and even enforcing these contracts. And together, in the combination between machine-readable term sheets, machine-executable term sheets, with blockchain, you get to smart financial contracts. And smart financial contracts will allow you to do exactly what we all want to do in this room and outside. It will give you unique opportunities, unique opportunities to have portfolio management, to have securitization in a near automated level and trade in a way that previously was impossible to do. And, you know, at Casper Association, with respect to the nucleus finance, which uses Casper technology, we do that for a client, we do that for customers. We take an on chain environment, in our case here, we're talking about you know, a several billion uh, uh, euro large portfolio of term loans and leasing contracts. And we represent that on chain. And we represent that on chain with an asset side, a liability side, and an ownership ledger. In addition, because we like blockchain so much, we also represent the asset itself, the collateral itself on chain. It's a bit difficult to tokenize a machine uh, but, uh, but you know, you can represent the collateral on-chain. And what is the future of finance? Imagine the future of finance is really, so we have this issuer of obligations, and this issuer of obligations accesses the 
capital market and goes to um, uh, goes to a capital provider and says, you know, I have here a portfolio. I have leasing contracts. I have term loans. I have some structural products. I'm from Switzerland, so in Switzerland we say Strucki for structural products. So I have some st structural products here to, you know, hedge my portfolio. Which type of obligations and of assets would you like to have? And then, you know, the capital provider says, I really, really like all the machine manufacturers, you know, in Bavaria. So I'd like to have whatever you have in Bavaria. That's what I'd like to have in my portfolio. And, you know, I really do like, you know, some SME loans, you know, around Berlin because, you know, the government is always spending money. They always have cash flow. So I want the SME loans, term loans that you have. That's what you book. And you simply push the button and you transfer the asset from one side to, from one wallet to another wallet. And the beautiful thing is because we are talking about the same obligations in a machine readable and machine executable format, we solve really critical problems in finance, right? We address the problem of reconciliation. We all look at the same kind of way we're, f we're calculating the asset, uh, the cash flows, I'm sorry, and we're addressing systemic risks. And the beautiful thing is, you know, you call up the regulator and say, listen, I'm not gonna pay PwC, KPMG, they're good guys because they pay for dinner tonight, right? But I'm not gonna pay PwC or any other institutions to come and audit me to send you some you know, stack of papers. I'm just gonna give you an API that represents all the position that I have on my balance sheet. And then you can tell me you know, whether this is okay or not. All right? That's what the future of regulation will look like. Would have helped in Switzerland too with Credit Suisse. So now, the word of warning, now the hope uh, afterwards with uh, with uh, uh, Justus, the word of warning is, unless, unless you have an algorithmic standardized representation of financial contracts in your tokens, which provide you near real-time balance sheets uh, and, you know, nearly automated securitization opportunities, etc., unless you have that in your platforms, no one will use it. No one will use these platforms. Okay, because all you do without intelligence on these tokens and in these platforms, all you do is you recreate rails that already exist. And all your colleagues in banks or your, or your investors will tell you, but I can see you just do what it already exists. There's nothing new. I can do this today. I can do this today. So now, the hope is nucleus finance, so uh, Justus will talk about what we have done so far in nucleus finance. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so Ralph showed you know, the vision, and now the boring part comes for the actual product. So we are nucleus finance, we are a joint venture out of Casper Labs and Ariadne, and we provide a blockchain, a blockchain uh, use cases for the financial service industry and one of the use cases is the exact use case that Ralph just talked about and I will go in a bit more detail how it exactly works from our side. So to just basically add a bit more color to what R Ralph said, I think it's very difficult to add more color to what he said but I'll try anyways. So currently one major issue within tokenization is there's no common understanding of what are we really tokenizing. So it's basically the same thing as in the existing traditional, uh, traditional capital markets. Everyone defines his, uh, his, for example, the interest rate differently. It's one times it's called E, one times it's called INT, e and there are diff many different, let's say, just naming nomenclatures. But there are other things as well. Like we don't really agree as well. How do we really calculate it? What are the repayment rates, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So there's a huge issue already in the traditional capital capital markets, and we see that. Blockchain, to, uh, to blockchain tokenization is basically adapting this old, st old style of, let's say, inefficient structuring of products. And we solve this. So what Ralph just described in more detail, we bring natively digital term sheets that are machine readable, readable and machine executable. And with this, you have tons of different opportunities and uh, opportunities and possibilities, for example, to do price calculations, to do 
portfolio creation, to do better securitization, et cetera, et cetera, just because you have a better understanding of the underlying data and the underlying financial contract. But how does it exactly work? So we think differently about how a financial contract works and should work. So currently, a lot of financial contracts are basically just a heap of paper, it's written by lawyers, there's no common logic and just no common understanding, and especially no machine readability. It's just a stack of paper. And I hope there are no lawyers in the room, but lawyers are known for being bad at math, so I'm not sure if this is the right approach. So we think differently about financial contracts. So for us, a financial contract is an algorithmic representation, plus, of course, it's still very important, the legal part. So we take the Actus standard for this. The Actus standard is an open source standard. It was developed over 30 years of research and development. And it, it represents a cash flow as an algorithmic representa representation of a cash flow, a financial contract as an algorithmic representation of a cash flow exchange. Because what is a financial contract in its own? It's just an exchange of cash flows. I give you money and you give me money back on specific terms and specific conditions, but this is the underlying basis of a financial contract. And the Actus standard does this exactly. So for example, here we see two types of contracts. One is a bond, the other, the other is a mortgage uh, to showcase how basically a cash flow exchange pattern could look like. But Actus is doing around 98% of all, covers 98% of all financial contracts there are. And last time I was here, Marcel asked me why only 98%. And the answer is because they are always hyper exotic products. Like there are always some very, very exotic products. We cover up exotic products and exotic options, but they are always, let's say, the crazy guys in the room, and we can't, which is why we can't claim we cover 100%. But we, a bank, for example, a normal bank runs with around six to seven different, uh, different uh, let's say, cash flow exchange types. And this actor standard, as I said, it was developed by uh, Willy Bremertz, uh, like a th PhD thesis in the 80s, and it was, in its, its exception, found its way after the 2008 mortgage prime, uh, mortgage backed security or subprime mortgage crisis, because no one understood what were the real cash flows that are potentially defaulting or that are potentially at risk. And we see that recently as well with SVB, because no one understood what was the future cash flows, no one understood what is the potential issue. And Actus has those 32 contract types, which are cash flows exchange patterns, to represent exactly that. With nine, it covers 98% of all financial contracts. But enough talk about theory. I just wanted to show you a bit more about basically our actual product. So we have a, 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 an architecture which combines off-chain and on-chain capabilities. The off-chain part covers the product definition based on the Actus standard, does all the life cycle management, for example, through interest rate resets, etc and also, for example, does financial analytics as well. And on top of that, we have the on-chain capabilities. So, for example, first of all, at the inception of the contract, we put everything on-chain as a smart financial contract representation. This is the initial state. And of, of course, during the lifecycle management, we update everything on-chain as well. So we have all state changes represented on-chain as well in a mutable form. So you can go back and say, at this point in time, all, all financial contracts within this organization had this in sp specific state. And this, with this, we can do all crazy kind of things. So for example, we can do executable tokens. We develop an asset and liability token, which tokenizes this financial contract. The asset token, of course, and the liability token both point to this financial contract, and you can create a portfolio out of this. And with this portfolio, you can easily analyze every individual contract on a granular basis within this portfolio. So for example, we have 10,000 different, I love to, like to take the mortgage one because we know what happened in 2008. Uh, you have 10,000 different portfolios in your mortgage, um, mortgage uh, security. And you can analyze every individual contract within this portfolio because you understand on a machine readable basis what are the future cash flows or what are the potential future cash flows because I can discount them separate, individually because I have, can set up my own risk model based on my own calculations and expectations of the market. And this, of course, creates a lot more liquidity. But this sounds very complicated, to be honest. So I just want to show you how easy it works from our side. It's a very quick product demo, just from a, uh, just a few screenshots. So it's basically just a very simple interface. You can select, I want to have a variable mortgage in this case. Um, you, can, you get certain parameters, for example, the interest rate, the notional principle, the tenure, etc. You just input the data, and that's already it. You already have your smart financial contract in a way. 
And of course, a variable, variable mortgage is one product. Recently did a POC together with WM Data around discount certificates, so a bit more complex products as well. As I said, we can cover 98% of all financial contracts and capital markets today. So going back to, the, uh, to these demos, so we, so we then calculate all the payment schedules. So all cash flow relevant positions in this, in, this, uh, in this contract will be calculated individually for every contract that, that was defined. And with, uh, and with this, we can do analysis, of course, because, um, because we know the underlying data, we know all the cash flow relevant positions, and this, of course, creates a lot of possibilities. And, of course, we can also tokenize it as well. So you just click a button, I want to tokenize this asset, and then you can tokenize your asset, bring it to, on the chain. We currently work with the Casper chain, because the Casper chain has some, uh, some capabilities that we really like, but we are potentially chain agnostic, so if everyone wants to mint, for example, in Polygon or ETH, Ethereum, etc., doesn't matter to us. We just want to provide asset interoperably in asset interoperable and machine readable data structures. So now you have the token, uh, which sits on top of this, uh, which takes the, all the cash flow relevant positions, hashes it within the token, and creates a machine readable, uh, a machine readable uh, token on the chain, which of course can, for example, you can create a security portfolio out of that. Etc. Etc. So you have all this kind of capabilities, and for example, uh, if there is an interest rate reset, you can, you can click, uh, just click uh, rate reset. You can input your new interest rate. It creates, recalculates all the potential cash flows for the future, hashes them on chain, and suddenly you can also analyze that as well. So you have al always the ongoing overview of the current uh, of the current situation. For example, similarly, if there is a late payments. Uh, if there are late payments within the portfolio, you see that as well, because everything is hashed and posted on chain. And based on that, because you have this good uh, data, you suddenly can do a lot of data analytics. So for example, you can ju just, just take the future potential expected cash flows, and you can build different, for example, just balance sheets, because you just say, I, I, work, in, I work with US GAAP or I have IFRS, and you just can take the future expected cash flows, create your balance sheet, also the past, uh, past cash flows, of course, as well. And then you can do liquidity forecasting, you can do stress testing, you can, um, you can credit exposure uh, risk calculation. So you can do all kinds of things just because you have a good understanding of what the underlying data of the cash flow is. And everything is, for example, solved as well for reconciliation issues. Different departments talk the same language, and the same language is, th in this case, math-based financial contracts. And this is not only a theory, we already work, for example, with different clients. So our main idea is to offer the software for different banks, for example, or tokenization providers, to utilize it to tokenize their assets. So we are not a tokenizer ourselves because we don't want to do, deal with regulation, we only want to deal with software. So we provide the software to other parties, third parties. And for example, we currently work with the leasing company, I think Ralph already mentioned it briefly. We, uh, we did a, developed a, a POC with WM Data for a structured tokenized financial product. And we're currently also in an exemption with a state government with around 136 or 63 GDP to, uh, to develop a, factory, a factory, factorization marketplace for their, uh, for, their local, uh, for their local SMEs. So we are already working on this on a live basis. So everything that I just told you is already lively implement, implemented. And I think this is a very good product for tokenization providers, banks, etc., to provide this machine-readable data structure. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please come to me or Ralph after the, after the uh, uh, presentation and happy to uh, take this further.